this is one something. story, but I mean the whole thing. You know, you were in it a long I, time. I, 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 I mean, I can go through lots of stuff in the bank that I can. You know, I, cha I changed the lending rules. I, mm -hmm. I got, uh, changed a lot of stuff. I mean, I, you know, and, and I fully applaud that, 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 that you've kind of come this, from this and, background and the bank and not changed. In, in that, in that case, just nuancing I mean, your I message that, so that you're right, that it is changing governance regimes, not just skipping out and being a citizen. Because we know, having done both, yeah. that it doesn't work as a dichotomy. And then that's the message, no, the no, kind no. of signal that we need, that sophisticated, how do we as citizens inject new messages into the World Bank? Because we don't want to wait 30 years and to have to get Wolf of Bits to resign. Why do we have to fight for it? It's the right. You know, so like, that's the that's nuance that would be great to come, because you're yeah. in a very unique position in that sense. Yeah. Um, and I think yeah, if you can I really say, what's, what's, the, what's the alchemical yeah. balance between pumping up those organizations well, you say are so important still and yet and not allowing their excesses to continue yeah. but, but and think, finding a I role for citizens. One of the things that's incredibly helpful <laughs> when you're on the inside is having outsiders who are very critical, you know, yeah. because they force, especially, but, especially in, in, I, but some of it's crazy, and this is a whole other debate, I don't know where you stand on it. For example, the word is... Okay, everyone in Uganda and the neighboring countries are benefiting enormously from this. This tiny NGO in San Francisco, never been to Uganda, said it, it was the worst thing in the world and got Congress to vote again. Well, basically, content, content wise, so, I think you're on a good page, but so, it's a strategic so, thing, it's not very so, clear for me. So the, 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 I think Citizens Action is fantastic. <laughs> the problem is that it can be, as you know, an unguided yeah. missile. Yeah. And, and so, so, and, but engage. More, but 90% of what the criticism of these institutions is good and legitimate and, and, and forces the evolution because it, they, they, you know, they are controlled mainly by, jobs, by politicians who are accountable to democratic elections. Are you going for a drink? I'm just keen to find out what your school is up to. Yeah, I... I um, what you've got to do a media release. Is, is there something outside yeah, you want to say? Well, you said something else. Yeah. If you want to carry on something, I'll see you outside. I'll be out there. I'll see you for a moment. Yeah, um, okay. And, uh, yeah, oh, it's okay. not going to disappear. We're just going to be boring. Sorry, no, stuff no, no, no. But thanks for all coming and supporting the forum. Please, come and take your time. Okay. And we're yeah, yeah, yeah. to move entirely to a service economy yeah. globally because yeah. well, they always do that. What do you think is the feasibility or likelihood of a steady state economy? Something similar. So, this is a really important debate, particularly obviously on the sustainability, environmental, uh, environmental front. Um, I think, the, I think for us, and I think, I mean, there's all the, there's different dimensions. One is, there's all this evidence now that over an income level of about twenty thousand dollars per capita, there's no increase in happiness to to income. Um, so. But up to there, there really is. Um, so like bizarrely, the Nigerians are the happiest time they have for coming because way below that. So I think I believe very strongly in everyone having development options. I think everyone's got the right to basic transport power, which does imply growth for, for developing countries. Uh, because there's no way any redistribution model on the current growth levels would, would provide those goods and services. So to me, um, the, the growth question is really about for developing countries, it's really what sort of growth, and, and I'm trying to work on the democratic on green, green, growth. green growth. What does green growth mean? Um, and uh, um, it seems like lecture, right? For rich countries, I think it's yeah, also to go down. Actually, why growth? No, so, uh, I think it's feasible for rich countries to have really steady states and then to have developing. Because yeah. then the opposite. The problem with that case is, yeah. is part of the. The, the demographic yeah, dynamics. Yeah. Who's going to pay our pensions? Yeah. If, if there's not a lot of wealth being created by young people, um, who's going to sustain us? And the, and the, the liability of, of our liability is growing, even though that the so. And if it, if 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 say the national health service and pensions everything collapsed, which it would have to, I think yeah. in a few decades, yeah. yeah. um, would we be happy? <laughs> Or well, maybe inject yeah. us with the happiness drug and we would be. <laughs> would the young people be happy enough paying that much more tax to support the aging population? So that's why I think one of the big challenges in the future is this intergenerational intergenerational contract, whichever now, is gonna is gonna have to be reformed completely. And part of that's gonna have to be around this growth I mean, no matter how hard you work, they're not gonna work hard enough to keep us going. <laughs> that's why that, and then you get the migration story. Yeah. Um, but, but, um, but I think we certainly need a declining economy in terms of carbon, and that's uh, radical. I mean, we need to be operating at 20% of our current carbon at most. So what does that mean? So um, transport economy, transport growth, at least private transport. Economy.
But yeah. visual growth in green areas of that <laughs> stuff is then going to suddenly take off. Yeah, exactly. Then, exactly. exactly. So exactly. transformation. I mean, so I, I, I feel more comfortable with, with talking about the quality of growth rather than the. And you asked them to touch the speed It's, it's an, really important about it, and it'll get more important. The terribly sad thing is we also, actually succeeding in. No, we've got negative growth. We don't really want to. <laughs> <laughs> Not the right time. Yeah, the right exactly, time. exactly. We need to get out of our debt first you know, before, we have, before we have negative growth. Sure. You've got to, and that's the other problem is, is, is the intergenerational when dynamics on debt. When do you say, right, now we're going to try and go. You, you can't have a huge debt burden when you say. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Really okay. Yeah. Hey, um, Hi. I've been to a lot of tools no, yeah. like this one. Yeah. Um, I've heard of the Global Poverty Project. I've heard of Global Poverty Project. Okay, big thing. Yeah. 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 Those, those two words yeah. I've heard of. <laughs> maybe not together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've heard a lot of talks like this, and everyone always says, you know, how will you do something yeah. and stuff. But I was wondering, what can I actually do to sort of you know, help change things for better? As in, like, I'm very, very interested in all this type of stuff. I go to these talks. I form my own what are your skills? I'm currently a medic. Um, you got your degree. One, I've done three oh. years. Um, I've graduated from Cambridge. Um, my first three years. Got another three years to do in London. I'm not sure going to stay in London though. Um, I mean, I wouldn't mind going to World Health or something like that. But I just don't really know sort of what I can do. Everyone keeps going about sort of how there's all these problems and all this stuff. I mean, I feel sit there feel quite small. Mm. <laughs> he says, that's one of the How do how did you get into an organisation like the World Bank? Where did you start from? Sort of? <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm so very unusual in the World Bank because I came in as sort of a, a late developer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it does bring in a lot of people in their late 20s. And the, 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 I mean, there's, there's, there's lots of institutions like, I mean, you know, DFID, Department for International Development, which is the UK aid agency. I mean, interestingly enough, it's the only, I think with maybe parts of the health service, that's not, that's not contracting. Um, so DFID's a great organisation that employs medics and, 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 and others. Um, it's actually, I think it's a good, it's, I think it's a good organisation. The World Bank's an interesting organisation, good and bad. Um, but it's very, very, very difficult to get into. But how do you get into it? There's no sort of graduate entry program. There is, there's something called the Young Professionals Program.